Welcome to this week's Lit Family video. We're, We're the, the Knight family, family and here's our story. When I was a child, I loved playing with baby dolls. I was the youngest of five children, and my parents and siblings indulged me with an entire cedar chest of dolls. I would play with them and change their clothes, sit them at the dinner table, and take them on walks in my baby carriage. And that love for children stayed with me through the years. I eventually went to college, studied child psychology, and became a school psychologist. You can imagine my excitement when I found and married my husband, Chris, and we began planning to start a family of our own. Having gotten married later in life, infertility was distressing, but by the grace of God, we conceived our daughter, Grace, and felt that indescribable joy that parents do. In time, we were blessed again to conceive, but after about 13 weeks, that pregnancy ended in a miscarriage. And for a long time, I felt trapped under this dark cloud. I tried to pull myself out of it for my daughter's sake. She was so young and innocent, but I was stuck. A while later, Grace was to be in her first dance recital. It was scheduled for the day before Mother's Day, and I was fully prepared to have my husband take her to the event so I could hide under the covers with a box of Kleenex and the lights off. But as I was dressing my toddler in her tiny black tights and her tiny black leotard and pinning little black feathers in her hair, her sweet little eyes looked up at me and she whispered, I'll wave to you, mommy. So I knew in my heart, I had to mom up and go with my husband to watch her. So we're at the recital and these three toddler babies tiptoe out on the stage and they huddle together and they sit down in this teeny circle and they lean on each other like they're baby birds sleeping in a nest. And I hear this big aww from the audience and the music starts and it's the song Blackbird by the Beatles and it hit me. All my life I wanted to be a mom. My entire being ached for that moment to arise. And then my epiphany. The moment arose. Good grief, she's here and I'm missing it, stuck in the loss and what was taken from me, rather than the blessing of this tiny human waving to me from up on stage and the amazing rock sitting next to me through it all. The Holy Spirit washed over me in that grace-filled moment, and I allowed God's amazing love into my heart. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow. Isaiah 65. Life changes us when we truly believe that God is good, that he never leaves us, never, not once, in all that darkness and longing. He never lets go, and he loves us so much. That night, God revealed his immeasurable love to me, for me just like he revealed it to the Magi with the birth of a baby boy on that holy night. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem saying, where is the newborn king of the Jews? Oh, come, all ye faithful. The three kings had willing hearts. They believed. They set aside the tasks of daily life in order to seek out and worship the Messiah. Are we willing to do the same in our lives? Come to They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did it homage. Born the king of angels. Oh, come, let us adore him. We approach him with humble hearts. 
Are we willing to detach from our desires and follow his? This week, we challenge you to think about the gifts you bring to our Messiah and give them. It's time. Emmanuel. Him cries the Lord. Join us in the Great Adventures of Family at islandmyfamily.us. We'll meet you this Sunday in the Eucharist. I know how truly and deeply God loves you. Family. <laughs> 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 <laughs>